Warning, this podcast contains descriptions of murder, torture and abuse. As a result, it may not be suitable for everybody. Gloucester, famous for its rugby and the cathedral where the Harry Potter series were filmed, the county town in the southwest of England. Gloucester lies on the River Severn, just between the Cotswolds to the east and the Forest of Dean to the west. The cathedral holds the burial place of King Edward II, but how did this idyllic southwest town become the centre of the British crime history? We'll talk about the famous killer couple, Fred and Rose West. We'll talk about the brutal slaying of Holly Gazard and the horrific domestic abuse murdering of Laura Mortimer and her 11-year-old daughter, Ella, by Christopher Bill. Frederick Walter West and Rosemary Pauline West, Fred and Rose, were the duo of serial killers and serial rapists who killed at least a dozen young British girls, including several of their own daughters. Fred was born in a small town of Much Markle in Herefordshire. He was the second of six children and by Fred's own admission, sexual abuse of various kinds were common in the household. Fred claimed that his father had sexual relationships with his daughters and taught him about bestiality. It was also suspected that Fred's mother started sexually abusing him when he was 12, though Fred never admitted this and it has never been confirmed. When Fred was physically punished for doing badly in school, he was shown some aptitude at woodwork and artwork. His mother, who was obese and often dressed unattractively, often went to the school in person to yell at the teachers for doing so. Fred left school at the age of 15 and was almost illiterate. The only job he could get was a farmhand. At 16, He became more attracted to girls and at the age of 17 he was in a motorcycle accident that put him in a coma for a week. This led to a metal plate being inserted into a head. After breaking one of his legs it was permanently shorter than the other. He was subject to a bad temper and often had violent bursts of anger. Even two years after the accident, Fred hurt his head yet again when he stuck his hand up a girl's skirt and she pushed him down a fire escape. At the age of 19, he was convicted of molesting a 13-year-old girl, though he didn't serve any jail time at the time because his doctor said he suffered from epileptic fits. After this, he went to live with his sister, and was disowned by the rest of his family. Fred got work on the construction site, but was fired for stealing from his workplace. At the age of 21, his family let him back into their lives and he moved back to Much Markle. He resumed a romantic relationship with an ex-girlfriend, Catherine Rina Costello, who had been a petty thief when they first dated and she'd moved on to prostitution. Rini was already pregnant with the child of a Pakistani man. They'd married and kept the child to explain why the baby was half Asian. Fred and Rina wrote to the parents to say that the baby had died in childbirth and that her child, a girl named Charmaine Carroll, was adopted. They married in November 
and moved to Scotland together. The couple had a child of their own in July 1964 called Anne Marie. During this time, Fred worked as an ice cream truck driver that gave him plenty of access to available young women in the area. Their life in Scotland came to an end when Fred accidentally ran over a four-year-old boy with his truck. This accident wasn't deemed Fred's fault. And afterwards, Fred moved with his family, as well as Isa McNeil, who was their nanny, and Anna McPhail, a friend of Costello, back to Gloucestershire, where he got a job in a slaughterhouse. Shortly afterwards, the marriage failed and Costello went back to Scotland, coming back in July 1966 for a daughter, only to discover that Fred had started a relationship with McPhail. In 1967, McPhail became pregnant with Fred's child and tried to get him to divorce Costello. Fred killed and dismembered and buried her. Costello finally left Fred a few months later, leaving their children with him. Fred is suspected of ki killed again in January 68, when 15-year-old Mary Barstom disappeared from a bus stop. After the death of his mother in February, Fred started committed a lot of petty thefts and changed jobs often. During his stint as a bakery truck driver, he met his future wife and accomplice, Rose. Rosemary was born Rosemary Letts in Devon, England, 1953. Her household was troubled and abusive. Her father, Bill, was constantly disciplining her and her siblings and her mother. Her mother Daisy had become pregnant with Rosemary and she had received electroconvulsive therapy as treatment for her severe depression. Growing up, Rosemary was sexually abused by her father. She wasn't very bright and overweight and she was often teased and responded by attacking her bullies aggressively. When she was just a teenager, she became more sexually active and was caught getting into bed with one of her younger brothers and sexually abusing him. Her father prevented her from dating boys of her own age, though she did pursue relationships with older men where she lived. One of these men took advantage and raped her. When Rose was 15, her mother finally had enough of her husband's abuse and took Rose and moved in with one of her adult daughters and her husband. Rose started spending more time with male companions. Later that same year, Rosemary moved back with her father. Not long after this, she met Fred West, who was 12 years her senior. Her father objected to Fred seeing her Fred had done several stints in jail for theft and he failed, failed to pay for his fines of other previous offences. Around this time, Rosemary became pregnant with his child called Heather. She also took care of his other children. Rose treated her stepdaughters badly. In the summer of 1971, Rosemary snapped and killed Charmaine. She severed the body's fingers and toes and Fred buried it under their kitchen floor. In August 1971, Costello disappeared when she came looking for Charmaine. Because her body was found to have its fingers and toes cut off when it was discovered, Fred, as a result, was suspected of being the killer. Fred and Rose married on January 29, 1972. 
Fred encouraged Rose to have sex with other men, both for money and fun, and he often watched. He took pictures and posted them in magazines and ads for prostitution. In June 72, he had another daughter, Mae West. At this time, due to the expanded family and Rose's business, they moved to 25 Cromwell Street, where they could carry out their rapes and murders. Rose, still working as a prostitute from her home, had rooms fitted with peepholes for Fred to use, and he hung a red light outside to tell the children not to enter. Rose gave birth to other children over the next few years, seven in total, with three of them fathered by Fred. In October 72, Fred and Rose hired a young woman named Catherine Owens to work for them as a nanny for their children. They made sexual advances on her and she declined every time. One night in December, they both unsuccessfully tried to seduce her and held her captive overnight. Fred threatened to let some of his friends have her and they would have killed her, she complied. The next day they released her. She went to the police. Though she pressed charges, Fred was able to convince the court that the act was forced had been consensual. He and Rose were just fined for the indecent assault. Over the next six years, they killed at least eight women who moved, made their way to 25 Cromwell Street as either lodges or employees. The first was Linda Goff. She was a seamstress to the West. Carl Ann Cooper had disappeared while walking home from a movie theater. In December, Lucy Catherine Partington disappeared from a bus stop while way on her way home after Christmas. She was murdered by Fred and Rose, who abducted her, held her captive for a week over the new year, and raped and tortured her, and then killed her. On January the 3rd, Fred was treated for a laceration, which had been believed to be inflicted when he dismembered Partington. From 1974 to 1975, through to 1976, 77, 78 and 79, Five more women, Therese Singlehadler, Shirley Hubbard, Janita Marion Mott, Shirley Ann Robinson and Alison Chambers met the same fact. It is unknown if the West killed more than the following years. If they hadn't, it's improbable, but the bodies weren't buried on the property. The girls were known to have been abducted, raped and some were released. Others were murdered. During this time, Fred sexually abused his daughter, Amory West. She became pregnant and had terminated it. When she left home after running away, he started abusing Heather West. Fred disposed of any of his victims by burying them under the garage of the house or in the garden. Fred was often seen doing lots of home improvements. To fund this, Fred was frequently stealing and fencing anything he had stolen. Throughout this time, it was often brought to the police's attention, though the killings went unnoticed. In 1986, they came close to being exposed when Heather told her friends about the abuse she suffered. June the following year, Fred and Rose strangled her to death to silence her. They dismembered and buried her in the garden. Fred and Rose West finally were exposed in May 1992 when Fred videotaped himself raping one of his daughters. His daughter told her friends and one of them reported the West to the police. A search warrant was gained and in August they searched the house for evidence of child abuse. 
Fred was arrested for rape and sodomy of a minor and Rose was arrested as an accomplice. While they were being processed, their younger children were placed in the care of the government. While Fred was in custody, custody, Rose became depressed and even attempted suicide. She was saved by one of her sons. The rape case fell apart when the victim backed out. Another search warrant was given to have the property dug up after suspicions arose around the bodies. Whilst they were searching, human bones started cropping up. Fred confessed to having committed the murders alone in order to protect Rose. He did not re- admit to raping any of the victims, saying he wanted to have sex with them. The bodies at Anne McPhail and Charmaine West turned up. At this point, seeking to protect herself, Rose cut off cordial contact with her husband. In December 30th, 13th 1994 he was charged with a dozen counts of murder on new year's day he hanged himself in the cell at winston green prison with a knotted bedsheet rose also put on trial at the end first for rape and then for murder as well she never confessed to any of the murders and ever against her was largely circumstantial On November 22nd, 1995, Rose was found to be guilty of 10 murders and sentenced to life in prison. In 1996, 25 Cromwell Street was completely demolished and the site turned into a pathway. Holly Gazard was stabbed by a spurned ex in the beauty salon she worked in front of customers and colleagues minutes after sending a chilling warned you all text. Holly Gazard, 20 at the time, was knifed 14 times by Asher Maslin days after she dumped him on Valentine's Day. She didn't think, nor did her family, that her decision to finish with the possessive Maslin would send him into unthinkable rage. This happened on broad daylight on February the 18th, 2014 at La Bella Beauty Salon in Gloucester, where Holly worked. After putting the finishing touches to a client's hair, Maslin came in and repeatedly stabbed her with a kitchen knife he had bought for just three pound hours earlier. Holly's shocked colleagues could only watch in horror. Minutes earlier, he had texted a partner of Holly's sister, Chloe, saying, I warned you all. The beautiful young woman had been dumped, abused Maslin, when he stole her debit card and emptied her account of £300. Holly, at the time, reported them to the police. They attempted to arrest Maslin that evening, but they were unable to relocate him as he was on a drink and cocaine and crack binge in London. He was bombarding Holly with texts, including one that said, I don't want to get fucking violent as I take it too far. On the day of Holly's murder, a 21 year old Maslin was seen on CCTV entering a cash converters at 3.46pm to sell a DVD player for £5. Minutes later at 3.52, using the cash he had acquired, he was filmed inside a Wilkinson store across the road buying a 12 inch stainless steel carving knife for £3. He would then go in to enter the salon Holly worked at using the blade to kill her. The judge presiding over the case quoted as saying it was a merciless killing. In the six years before Holly's death, Maslin was arrested 23 times for a variety of offences, including domestic violence, criminal damage, possession of Class A drugs and theft. He was also involved in 24 violent incidents, three including Holly, 
12 involving one partner and two involving another ex, three involving his mother and four against other unconnected people. Maslin, a former security guard from Cheltenham, was jailed for life with a minimum of 24 years. Holly's death came after a year in which her dreams of travelling evaporated, her life turns upside down and a campaign of harassment was embarked upon by Maslin. He tried to control her in every move, how he physically abused her and threatened her with violence despite all initial signs pointing him out to be good. He also threatened to throw acid over her. Despite having been arrested for offences with increasing violence, neither Holly or her friends had any idea of the type of the person Maslin was. He was described as a serial perpetrator. People also described how, whilst he was drinking, the mask slipped and they saw a different size of him. Especially at Holly's mum's birthday meal when one such occasion occurred. This is when he started to show his true self. Trying to humiliate Holly in front of everybody else. He spoke to her like dirt. Holly was also attacked at Notting Hill Carnival by Maslin when he attacked her for simply talking to his nephew and taking her to the toilet. Despite this, Holly continued her relationship until she tried to break it off on Valentine's Day 2014, days before she was killed. On Sunday, May 27, 2018, Laura Mortimer and her daughter Ella was murdered by their husband, Christopher Boone. Laura had been out for the evening with her friend. They visited a pub in Gloucester. Laura was described as being in good mood and happy. At this time, she confessed to her friend that she'd asked Christopher Boone her husband to leave within two weeks. The marriage had broken down months earlier when he had an affair. Laura admitted her husband was not happy with being told to leave the house. At the end of the evening, Laura took a taxi home, arriving at about 10 past one. The home on Dexter Way in Gloucester. Laura went to bed, but shortly afterwards, at around 1.18, Laura made a FaceTime call to her aunt in bed. At some point in the following three hours, Boone attacked and killed both her and her daughter Ella in the kitchen of their home. It is believed that Ella had come downstairs from her room because she heard an argument between her mother and Boone. A sustained and brutal act of violence, Boone used a kitchen knife to stab his wife 18 times and Ella, who presumably came down and fought him off, was stabbed 20 times. Forensics indicate they were attacked roughly at the same time. Laura died instantly due to her injuries as arteries were severed in her neck. Ella killed shortly after her mother. At this point, Boone called his mother at 4.30 and attended the house with her partner to discover what had happened. Her mother's partner called 999 at 4.50 a.m. Police contacted Boone by phone and he said, quote, I had an argument with my partner about 3 a.m. I was in bed and she came upstairs. We had an argument and ended up in the kitchen. She slapped me across the face and I picked up a knife and lost it. I need help, mental help, end quote. After a series of further phone calls failed, he told officers where he was. He was arrested shortly afterwards, before 6am, over a mile away in Sandhurst. 
police described the scene as horrendous. The police officers were in shock who first attended. Such was the number of blows and ferocity of the attack. Police believed the defendant unintentionally injured himself with the knife. Officers took him to hospital straight after for treatment on his hands, which had severe cuts and required bandages. In interviews with the police, Boone expressed no remorse. He declined to answer any questions throughout. He pleaded not guilty to two murder charges in a hearing at Bristol Crown Court on July 13th. Boone accepted he was responsible but indicated he would cite diminished responsibility due to loss of control and abnormality of mind. A medical report on September 21st found there was no grounds for Boone to argue there was diminished responsibility. He pleaded guilty to the murders on November 5th at Bristol Pran Court. Christopher Boone was jailed for a minimum of 29 years for murdering his wife and stepdaughter in Gloucester. Thank you for everybody who's listened to this episode. This episode has been researched, written and hosted by me, Andrew Knight. Sound, music and editing has been provided by Harry Edmondson. Make sure you subscribe to the show anywhere where you listen to your podcast. This allows the episode to be downloaded automatically as soon as it's released. Please reach out to us on the social media. We're at Hometown Murders on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. We'd love to hear from you. Please support the show by leaving a five-star rating or a review. It really does help. 